Hey, I just had to get on here real quick and talk about something that I just kind of found out. Uh, I was watching YouTube about a guy named Emmanuel Macron, which is the Prime Minister of France, and it's very interesting. I use an application called Gematrix, or Gema it's about Gematria, which is um, understanding people's names. The number of his name is very interesting. It's not 666, which is what the Bible tells us would be the number of the beast, but his name, Emmanuel, it means God is with us. And then Macron means a printed mark. So God is with us through a printed mark. That's the mark of the beast. So Emmanuel Macron's name literally means God with us through a mark. Is he some like the false prophet of the Antichrist? Or is he the one that bring that gives power to the beast? I don't know. But it's really interesting because some of the stuff he's saying right now is we need a global reset. We need a financial reset. We need to focus on climate change. They did these climate commandments that literally said, we're done with the biblical 10 commandments. And now we're going to a set of climate commandments. These are all really interesting um, things that are occurring in our world. And I truly, truly, truly believe that the leadership that is in high places today are the ones that will be ushering in this new world order, ushering in the mark of the beast, ushering in all of the things that are written about in Revelation and all the prophetic books of the Bible, I really, really believe that these people now are the ones, and now is the time. And so I would say get right with Jesus. Make sure that you are reading your Bible, that you have a personal relationship with Jesus. Don't be in what I like to call churchianity. As you show up to church on Sunday, you say, oh, I love Jesus. You eat the bread, drink the wine, and then you go out into your sin the rest of the week. You go drinking, sleeping around, acting like a fool all week long, and then you go to church on Sunday and think that means something. In fact, with that being said, I highly recommend that you stay out of the church because now they're adding in things like transgender uh, sec pastors and they're having people dance on crosses in, in, in the church. I was in New York not too long back and they had an LGBT church, an LGBTQ church. Now, I have no problem with those people. Live your life, do your thing, stay away from me. Like I have no issue. I, I have worked with some of them and guess what? I have absolutely no issue with them. But do I, do I want that in my church? No, I'm not going to that church. To me, that's not a church of God. That's a, that is a separate church with a separate God. Now, if you're a Christian, that's not your church. That's not where you go. So like, do I have an issue with them claiming that they're with Jesus? That's just a different God they worship. It's not, it's not the biblical one. It's a lie. It's, it's a deception. So anyway, if you're finding yourself in these uh, progressive churches or these churches that are saying that uh, – they believe certain things that are anti-biblical, then you're in the wrong place and you have a wrong faith and you don't believe in God. You don't believe in Jesus. There is only one God. There is only one way and that is through Jesus Christ, his son. There are no other gods. There are there are little demigods, little mini gods, small g gods like Satan and the princes of the power of the air and the kingdoms and powers and the rulers of this present, you know, present age that are, are here on this earth that are tormenting people and causing them to believe a lie. But they are not God himself, and they are not the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and they will in the end be destroyed 100%. And this is just my message to you that it would be get right with God, and that looks like putting on what we're told is the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, which is your belief directly in Jesus Christ that he died for you, and that that death, that, he, that sacrifice covers your sins. Then you have your breast plate of righteousness, which is the biggest part of the armor, where your lungs and your heart and your kidney and all of your vital organs other than your brain are located. Righteousness is that important to God, that you be righteous, that means that you have the entire armor of God as far as all your internal organs. The next thing is that I believe it's having your feet shod with truth or your your girds, uh, your, girds loined with, uh, your loins girded with truth. Uh, then there's like the preparation of the gospel, something about your feet with that. You have the sword of the word of God, which is the Bible, which is, you know, you reading that and letting that living word speak back to you and tell you uh, everything about you. And that's the full set of armor. So a lot of Christians believe by just having salvation, which is I believe in Jesus. It's enough. It's not enough. The devil's going to destroy you because you have a, a wide open chest and a breastplate. You have no sword to fight back. You're standing on a battlefield with a helmet on. And no armor and no sword. You are a goofball. When the, when the enemy comes to get to get you, he's like, ha, this is going to be easy, right? He's just got a helmet. So will you be saved by that? 
a lot of Christians would say, yes, as long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the one way, and there is no other way to heaven, you're saved. I have a slightly different perception on that. I think that it does actually require you to follow him. We're told to, if you love me, follow my commandments, that there will be, and there also will be many in the end of days when they're called up before the throne of judgment. And they say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast many demons out in your name and do many great miracles? And he'll say, be gone from me. I never knew you. And the reason for that is because you had a false sense of your salvation. And how does God tell us to get to know him? His word. And by being obedient and having a personal relationship. So if you're not doing those things, you are living a false Christianity. And that's a hard message for people. And you live how you desire to live, but just realize that comes with consequences. 100%. Anyway, with that being said, I would highly recommend looking into this guy, Emmanuel Macron. Highly recommend looking into the things that are happening in this world. The Euphrates River is drying up. You have Israel about to go to war with its enemies. You have all these countries that are coming against each other. You have the king of the north, which a lot of people believe could be Russia, right, who's uh, who's doing stuff in the Ukraine. There's biblical uh, uh, prophecies there. There's all kinds of stuff that's happening. Damascus is the next thing that's supposed to be destroyed. If Damascus gets destroyed, that city, I think it's the oldest city on the planet. That's the oldest still standing planet, city on the planet. If it gets destroyed, that would mean that literally it's never happened before. So that prophecy would ha be 100% true. You can say whatever you want to say about the Euphrates River drying up, but it would be really hard for the Bible to get right Damascus being destroyed since it's the oldest thing we have. Um, anyway, with that being said, I just hope that you be blessed and continue to seek the Lord, continue to pray, continue to spend time in his presence, and put on the full armor of God. Your enemy, the devil, roars, runs around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and you as a Christian is who he wants to devour. He doesn't have to devour worldly people who go out and live in sexual sin, who drink alcohol every weekend, who don't are disobedient to parents, who you know cheat, cheat in their relationships, don't heed the word of God, don't listen to his principles, don't do what he said so just be aware of that anyway be blessed god bless